Hi, Fashion Dolls. It is Motivation Monday, August 19th, and it is the first day kicking off the DNC, the Democratic National Convention. I am super excited, Fashion Dolls, for today's show. I hope you guys are also as well, too. I am feeling very demure and very much like a bad girl. Did you guys see today's look? How are y'all doing? Happy Monday. I hope y'all are all doing wonderful. Do y'all like the dress? Let me stand up so y'all can see it. Y'all see that? It's a lot on the sides. It's a lot going on. <laughs> but I hope you all are doing wonderful today. Happy Monday, everyone. So today's special guest is a singer and songwriter. And this is his first time ever here in the dollhouse. And I'm super excited. Yes, if y'all haven't seen the dress for today, y'all need to go and take a look at today's LOTD which is the look of the day. Um, I absolutely love this dress. I wanted to do something a little edgy, a little different, a little risk-taking. So let me go ahead and share this live with our very special guest so that we can get him in here. Fashion Dolls, give me one second. Hey, what is going on right here? It is turned completely black. Give me one minute. There we are. So today is the DNC Fashion Dolls. Are y'all ready? Are y'all excited? As I am, my girl, our girl, Jasmine Crockett is also in the lineup of speakers, y'all. So I'm super excited for that. I can't wait to see her. She has been doing her thing on the floor and Congress and Senate. Like, this election is very critical, very important. Make sure you guys please go and vote. If you have not, make sure that you go and check your registration to make sure that you are good so that you can vote in this upcoming election, which is November 5th. Now, if you're in South Carolina, early absentee begins October 21st to October, my bad, November 2nd. I want to make sure that I had it right. So let me see where my guest is because I just spoke with him so that we can get him in here. And we can get this interview started, Fashion Dolls. Um, make sure you guys also are subscribed to Style by Stevie Daytime on YouTube. It's a lot of interviews that I've been doing. We are on the road to 600. I was about to say, I, I, where is my mind today, y'all? I can't help it. Like, my God, I'm super excited for today's show and just the DNC tonight. But we are on the road to 700 shows. My bad. I got it incorrect. 700 shows y'all i'm super excited so while we're trying to get rod in here in the meantime between time i don't know where my beauty blender is i dropped it but i want you guys to make sure also that you check your information to make sure that you are registered and up to date it is very 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 important because they are already starting to do voter suppression tactics now if you're in the state of georgia we know that Brian Kemp and um, Raffsberger, Brad Raffsberger, uh, are trying to do things behind the scenes to help Donald Trump win this election, which cannot happen. It is very, very critical and important that you guys go and check your voter registration and information. And if you don't have a family member who's not registered, see to it that they get registered to vote in this election as well, too. It is very, very critical because she is crushing him in the polls. She don't really have to do anything at this point, but she is doing her thing, campaigning and rallying in, in the states as well, too. Now, I've talked to one of my girlfriends over the weekend. And I'm going to be doing a Black Women in South Carolina call. And I will keep you guys for Kamala call sometime in South Carolina. And we're going to be doing it via Zoom. Um, we're just going to have a conversation as Black women where we all get together and we talk about the issues that could affect us. Because if you guys have not heard about Trump's authoritarian Project 2025 regime, then you guys need to go and read over that. I need you guys to check my stories. That last slide before the glam story that I took of me with the hair and makeup and everything, I need you guys to go and share that with your family. You do not have to go through all 922 pages of that thing 
I broke it down for you right there of everything that Trump is trying to do. Just share that slide with him. Let him know what he's trying to do. He's trying to gut Medicare and Social Security. He is trying to eliminate the Board of Education. And he is also trying to reverse same-sex marriage. Basically trying to take us back to a time where we literally had to fight. If you're in the queer community, you know you had to go all the way to D.C. and get married. Because it wasn't legal in other states like how it is now where you can get married in all 50 states. This election is important and it is critical that we get out here and voice and voice our opinions. Even with what's going on with, in Palestine and Gaza, I see it as well too. I'm not blind to it, but Trump said this. This is what he said. He said, Israel finished the job. Those were his words. And when this man speaks, believe him. He's told so many lies his entire presidency, and it is very, very critical and crucial and important that we pay attention to everything that he does. All right? So let me see if my guest is ready. I just sent him the live. I'm going to send it to him again so that we can get Roddy in here, Fashion Dolls. I just sent it to him. I'm going to send it to him again. But yes, I want you guys to be ready. Be ready for every single thing that is coming in this election cycle because they are going to throw everything at us from racism to misogyny. It's, it's a lot of things that he has definitely riled up in a lot of people. And I've had to let some people go. Now, one of my... Okay, he's going to be joining me. Roddy is going to be joining me in a minute, but I wanted to start the show off political because I want you guys to know about the dangers of Project 2025 and how extremely dangerous it is to us as black people. Now, women didn't have the right to vote. They want to take away women's rights to their bodies. And I believe that everybody should have the choose to read what they want to read, love who they want to love freely and unapologetically. And more importantly, everybody should have the right to do what they want to with their own autonomy. You have no control over that. And I think that it is very, very critical and important that we all take these things in consideration. Even Medicaid and Medicare. When you go to the doctor, what is the first thing that the doctor, the receptionist at the front desk, she will ask you for? She will ask for your Medicaid and Medicare, your Medicare card. So it is very critical and important that you guys keep this in, in mind when you are voting in this election. Trump wants dictatorship. Kamala Harris wants freedom. So keep those two in mind. November 5th, get out and vote, and vote immediately, Fashion Dolls. All right, so without further ado, let me switch gears here, get back focused. My very special guest is a singer and songwriter, and I'm super excited to have him here in the Dollhouse, Fashion Dolls. Joining me today, we have Roddy Dondada. People are starting to leave the Republican Party and go and join and vote for Kamala. We now have Republicans for Kamala Harris, which is amazing. Unprecedented. We've never seen anything like it. So this election is very, very crucial and important that you guys get out and vote and let your voices be heard because they've already started trashing books on LGBTQ culture in Florida. And that's thanks to um, the Satan. Shout outs to my brother, Demario King on that. Right. Hey. Welcome. Hello. Hello. What's going on? I am doing well. Let me get my. There we are. Now I can hear you. All right. There we go. <laughs> Welcome to the dollhouse, handsome. How are you? I'm good. How about yourself? I'm doing wonderful. It is such a pleasure to have you here. So before we continue on with this interview, mm -hmm. how has 2024 been for you so far? Uh, 2024 has been interesting. Um, I mean, between, I guess, working and then being a whole uh, performing artist outside of it, it's been really, you know, ups and downs, but more uh, positive than bad. <laughs> and, that, and you have new music. You put new music out. We'll get yes. into your single. Uh -huh. And you're also in a play for the love of Mahalia, which is based on the life of Mahalia Jackson who yeah, is yeah. pivotal in the civil rights movement mm -hmm. and walking and marching alongside Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. If you guys seen the film, mm -hmm. some of which we'll get into. But 
I want to start from the beginning on a blank canvas, and I do this with all of my guests. I want to know from the beginning, when did you start performing, at what age? And tell us a little bit about your background, where you grew up, and right. how many siblings? So I'm originally from Philly. Um, I've been, okay, I always wanted to do music, but it wasn't one of those things where it's like, okay, am I going to take it serious in that? Um, I actually used to perform in high school. Um, I had a... I guess we were like a, a group. They used to say we were like a pretty, pretty ricky of high school. <laughs> um, but we used to always perform at the, like the talent shows or like the different um, events when they would close like the school down for assemblies and everything like that. Um, but then once I went to college, I started like distancing myself from the music, which was crazy. Um, it was about, let's see, 2017 when I lived in DC, mm. where I was like, you know, nothing's making me happy anymore. The only thing that felt like home was music. So it was like, all right, let me just, you know, do what needs to be done. And that's when I started taking it serious and actually recording and um, like doing what I got to do to make things happen. <laughs> Who are some of your musical influences? Michael Jackson, oh. Prince, uh, Marvin Gaye, of course, Beyonce, her work ethic is crazy. Um, Jay-Z, uh, I like your little James Brown, Jimi Hendrix, I can go on. Um, <laughs> I can go on, you got Lenny Kravitz in there. Um, and it's different elements from different artists um, that literally like, I guess I kind of take from or I look and I'm like, oh, I wonder if I try something like that. If I put that, implement that sound in my music, how does that work or if I implement this look or, you know, just, Kind of a plethora of different artists. My mom's been into music for like ever, but I think she was too shy to sing. Uh, like, was trying to do it as a profession, and she had kids, so it was like, all right, <laughs> so let me make and, let me make it happen. And look at you now. Now, yeah. how many sibl How many siblings do you have? My mom's side is me and my younger brother. Um, he actually does music himself. Um, he actually pushed me into taking it serious serious and it was like you're an artist you need to act like it behave like it um and on my dad's side there is two so we're all brothers um two on my mind's side me and my brother and then two brothers on my dad's side i asked that because everybody i have siblings too i have four brothers and i have mm -hmm. two sisters one of my sisters is no longer here with me but everybody Everybody has their own personality in their own niche. Mm -hmm. And when I think about that, I think about the Jackson family. You mentioned Michael Jackson because everybody in the family sang. Mm -hmm. So you said one of your other siblings does music as well, too. And mm -hmm. it's amazing to know that you all support each other. You're all supporting each other's dreams, each other's visions. How important is brotherhood and family to you? Um, it's a major factor because, I mean, for so my mom always raised us, uh, me and my brother, as we all we got at the end of the day. If she's gone, um, ain't nobody going to have each other's back, like that brotherly love. Um, so that's where we are with it. And of course, siblings fight and they go through their little situations and banters. But at the end of the day, ain't nothing coming between that bond, you know. Um, and the support is there. And not only because uh, he does music as well, but um, it's just, I don't want to call him a cheerleader. Leader, but he's always been like my biggest cheerleader or whatever mm -hmm. and that motivation there and we had a seven year difference but you sometimes it's my big brother sometimes but you know so the support's there and it's reciprocated so um we're actually thinking about working on some music together so that's gonna be awesome and, mm -hmm. and spike cherry says hey son <laughs> i am robert king <laughs> you, so your siblings your family is here watching hi family well, yeah, hey, fam. So my mom's on. Robert is actually, he is one of the producers. He's the writer for the play for Mahalia Jackson. Um, so we actually have rehearsal tonight. Make sure y'all come check us out on this live. Yes. Um, we, go, we go live in September, September 30th. We're going through October 2nd, I believe. So it's going to be uh, interesting. This is actually my first stage play where I will be in the ensemble, ensemble cast. Um, so different experience, but I'm excited for it. Now, 
Now, this is from the AMC Performance Company, and you guys can mm -hmm. get your tickets. They are available now at www.amcperformancecompany.com. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. the play runs through September 20th next month. Okay. This month is ran by so fast. <laughs> August went through so yeah. fast. Next week will be the last week of August. August that we have, but September mm -hmm. 20th to October 6th. That's before my mom's birthday. So hers yeah. is on the 7th, mine's on the 31st. Oh, you know. Yes, she's a Libra. Libra gang. I'm a Scorpio. One of my favorite people are Libras. Oh, who? <laughs> yeah. So tell us a little bit about your character because I've seen the flyer that you posted, mm -hmm. the video that you posted with you guys rehearsing and everything. Could you tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about your character and being a part of this all ensemble cast, telling the story of one of the most prolific voices in music history in the civil rights movement? So my character, so it's not a major role, uh, but I'm the choir director in the play. Uh, from what I'm gathering, they just want you to know how the good Southern Baptist folks are in the choir. They want me to be that choir director. So, so no, I guess I'll bring the comedic relief to the play. <laughs> Give a little excitement. Nothing major, just directing and, and, and coordinating. <laughs> so I'll be in there with my ones and twos. Yes. You guys have to go and check it out. Mahalia Jackson, I feel like she's another one underrated as a singer, mm -hmm. as an artist, as an artistry. Precious Lord, Take My Hand was the mm -hmm. first song from her that I heard. And then I think it was Lettucey that played her in the Selma film. But mm -hmm. this is going to be brought to life on stage. So mm -hmm. you guys need to go and see this woman's story. And I'm glad that you were able to find that balance with telling this woman's story and finding humor as well to bring in that comedic relief that we need because we're now, I must say that racism now is at an all time high in this country more mm -hmm. than ever. And this talks about the civil rights movement where we now mm -hmm. have an agenda when I opened it up the beginning of the show where I said they now have an agenda where they want to take us back to a time where things were divided. And in order for this country to move forward, we all have to move forward. So mm -hmm. more and more black stories like this, a black artist need to be told because she was one of the voices in the civil rights movement, not just Mahalia Jackson, but Lena Horne was another one of the pivotal voices. Um, mm -hmm. Nina Simone was also one of the pivotal voices in the civil rights movement. Um, Josephine Baker has been vocal mm -hmm. about issues of racism and injustice. So these women have also been pivotal to this movement and fighting alongside the things that we are still fighting for today. So I'm glad mm -hmm. that they are finally telling a story about her. Now I'm gonna go to some comments and get to some of you guys' questions questions fashion dolls my fraternal island yankee says skin is on point and that, that was going to be my yeah i'm gonna ask you that question too because we got to get into you. that <laughs> um it's just me says how important when making a song is it to choose a beat that aligns with the sentiment of the lyrics and the message of your project um for me it's very important um i actually i have to feel it so i'm a cancer um, you know, we're all about emotions and all of that good, lovey, flowy energy and everything. So I have to, the beat typically, sometimes I'll have lyrics first um, and I'll just have to find the beat. And I'll know when I hear it, if that's the right one for that. And then sometimes I'll write a song and the song will sit in my notepad for months, sometimes years. And then I'll hear a beat later on and I'm like, I got the perfect song for it. And then go back and re-record or record on that beat. Um, but I think the instruments, the, the, the beats, the soundtrack, all of that plays a part into the vibe and kind oh, of yeah. like the aesthetic that you're going for in that sound. Um, it definitely makes a difference. You can have a dark sounding track and it'll sound really, really dark with the lyrics or you can make it, you know, um, I think Chloe Bailey plays a lot off of dark sounds. Um, but she's a cancer too. <laughs> but she goes and does her vocals and her stackings and she makes it a little more poppy and, and that's her thing. So it's very important um, when finding the right track. I think that's just with anything. That's like working with people. You have to find that, co that cohesiveness um, that's going to like have everything come together and mesh well. Now You've mentioned Chloe Bailey, and we know what Chloe gives. She's an amazing performer. She is mm -hmm. a sex symbol. Now, my question for you is, do you consider yourself a sex symbol? You know, it's funny. 
I think I'm growing into my sex symbolism. <laughs> I was always shy. It was always, my family was always, they're not necessarily conservative, but it's always have a little decorum about yourself. You're not out here with shirts off and everything like that. It was put your clothes on. You know, we have women in the house, right. a different that stuff right. like that. Um, so now I tell everybody, when y'all see me on social media with no shirt on, that is a comfortability thing that I had to overcome myself because I was so like closed minded of like yeah. what everybody's going to think of and everything like that. And I'm just like, here I am. Love me or hate me. I'm free. But <laughs> so I think I'm working towards my sex symbolism. If, that, if that's even a word. <laughs> and that you, you are from what I've seen from your music to everything. You just ooze sex appeal. And you oh, give it to you. us through your music. You give us to it in so many different ways. And that's what I love about you. Because I'm free and open with my sexuality. And you guys know that I've talked about it here on my show a lot. So I believe that everybody, every artist should have a niche that sets them aside from, and that was going to be my next question from you, individuality. Mm -hmm. What sets you aside from other artists? And even the writing process. I'm going to go back to um, Jess's comment she just asked. Well, yeah. No, I'm sorry. He, he, <laughs> I couldn't see the picture. I don't have my glasses, y'all. Please forgive me. Don't hurt me. But yes, um, <laughs> back to his question in the writing process. What element mm -hmm. do you like when you are writing? Um, because I know artists like Erica Badu. She's one of my favorite singers. Mm -hmm. When she writes, she has to have a certain element where it may be incense and then it could be a dim room. For you, what type of element do you have? And also, what sets you aside from other artists? And yeah. All right. So all right. for elements, it all depends. Well, me and my brother, right? Um, sometimes it's literally, I think I work the fastest with, with him. And it's like, come on, let's write. Let's write a song. You want to do a song? And I'm like, okay, whatever. Let's get it. Um, and then we'll like knock it out like right then and there because he's one of the people like he'll sit there and record, record, record all day. Me, sometimes I got to sit back, take a moment, reflect on things. Um, but when I'm like by myself, sometimes like some of my greatest thoughts come in the shower, which is crazy. Um, the hook for move actually popped in my head in the shower. I didn't even have the beat yet. I just kept hearing, I want to hear you move. Don't ask me where that came from because I have no idea. But then I found a beat. And I said, this is the one. <laughs> but um, it all depends. Sometimes I'll just get the urge or I'll feel it. And it'll be like that little voice in the back of my head, like, you need to go work. You need to go work. You need to go work. You got stuff to do. You got stuff to do. And I'm like, if I ignore it, it'll just be one of those things that'll keep me up at night. You know, it's always that feeling like I got something to do or something that I should be doing. And if it's not me doing my music or writing, it's usually like just in the back of my head, just nagging, nagging, nagging. And then it's like, okay, let me go knock this out. Let me go get it done. And then uh, nine out of 10, when, that, when I wait that long, I typically write out almost a whole song in that one session and knock it out. So it all depends on the little elements. I'll set the vibe. Um, I'll take a little walk in the forest if you catch my drift. <laughs> and yeah, let it go. <laughs> and that ties into the next question right there, Jazz, he just asked, which is, how would you describe describe your style? We talk a lot about individuality here as well, too. And what mm -hmm. you've mentioned, Michael Jackson, and I can tell the Michael and Beyonce, for this song, the new single that you have out now, Move, that they've mm -hmm. definitely had an impact on you through your sound. So you can tell that <laughs> some of your musical influences are in your music. Mm -hmm. Like I hear Beyonce, I hear the Michael elements, I hear all of these references. So the question that Jazz asked, and then we got another question for you, I'm gonna go to the question box, is how okay. would you describe your style as an artist? And is your persona the same or the different from who you are in your daily walk? Um, my style as an artist, I think I'm kind of in an experimental phase right now. At first, when I actually started taking music and recording, yeah. like seriously, um, I came in as a full-fledged rapper. And I put air quotes loosely because me rapping was like a form of me. Can, am I allowed to cuss on here? Are More than welcome, like welcome to. That was another question I was going to okay. ask. What was your, <laughs> yeah, what was your favorite swear world? We, okay. We'll get to that later. Yeah. Oh, um, so uh, when I started like rapping, rapping, um, that was like a way of me shit talking. Um, so 
I was working this job where I couldn't get physical. You can't really say nothing. It was a government job. Had guns and stuff right. on the hips. Couldn't get too hostile or whatever. So it was like, all right, I can't say how I want to say or respond. How I want to say some shit talk. So I'd be at work, literally writing a whole rap about the people at work. Just going ham, going ham. My first rap that I did, it was to the babies. Um, what's the name of that song? It was like his first thing. I want to say, I can't think of it right now. But either way, that was my first freestyle as a rapper. And a lot of people were like eating it up. And they said, oh, we need more of this. We need more of this. So I started rapping, rapping, rapping. Then I ran into the issue with people would hear my music. And you would have one half of the crowd. They would love the, what they're hearing. But then when they see me physically, it doesn't add up. It's hard being a pretty boy, but the stuff that I be rapping about is real life. So it's, I ain't even get to the good stuff yet. But um, my brother actually geared me into singing more. We did a song together and he was like, oh, you should sing, you should do this part like this. And then I sang it and that kind of like transitioned me into getting back to my vocals or whatever. So now I'm more of a shit talking R&B artist, if that makes sense, or pop, yes. however that goes. Um, but aesthetically is kind of tricky because I've always given off like this kind of dark, like maybe mysterious kind of rock star or, um, and now I'm finding ways to kind of mesh the look with the music and it's starting to come together. I've noticed, cause I'm in the school for design. So I've noticed these last two performances that I did. Um, I made sure that every performance that I do, I create at least something that I wear something that I've designed myself. Um, but when I looked back at the footage, I was like, oh, this is giving rock star vibes. This is giving a little Lenny mm -hmm. Kravitz. This is a, so I, now I'm kind of like gearing my elements and stuff towards that kind of sound and trying to see what's that, what that's like. So I'm in an experimental phase right now. And, the, <laughs> but, but that's, and that's the first for every of, artist. Mm hmm But um, the first me from a lot of these artists, and I don't want to be cocky, is I write my own music. I feel myself out of engineer. I do my own backgrounds. I do my own oohs and eyes. I can design my own clothes, and I can actually sound good when live. Um, no auto-tune, but I don't want to be cocky. But <laughs> You know what? You made me think about another amazing artist and she does Tejano music she's mm -hmm. you guys know who I'm talking about um the late Selena oh, Selena yeah. designed her yeah. own costumes mm -hmm. um the bustier bribe we seen the movie mm -hmm. with JLo so all of these looks mm -hmm. some of those looks she came up with and even had a clothing line so mm -hmm. we don't see a whole lot of artists that are doing that that are writing for themselves as well as designing for themselves mm -hmm. and I mean well, in Vogue, the girl group you guys remember, in Vogue, they bought their own outfits from home and they styled their own outfits mm -hmm. for every concert. Because I remember I had an interview with Dawn Robinson from the group, and she was saying that the girl, each woman in the group, had to bring their own. The the video with the black dresses. Hold on, we all mm -hmm. know that video. They oh, bought their black dresses from. She said she bought her black dress that she would go clubbing in and mm -hmm. go partying in, and. So did the other ladies in the group as well, too. So that's the thing that is missing, I think, in this industry, whereas it's OK to hire a stylist. But also, if you got the skills where you can sew your own outfits, you, you can perform, write your own music, do all of these things, then you are a triple threat. That's even more. And it's saved not only that, but if you are an independent artist, which is where I'm going next. Ready to go there. Ready to go. We, <laughs> I've touched on this last Friday with Michael Finn, who is an independent artist, and I've also interviewed a plethora of Steve, um, independent artists from Phil Loft to Stephen Voice, who's coming on the show also this month as well, too. Um, they've had offers from major record deal labels, but being mm -hmm. an independent artist, you're putting a lot more into your craft your time you are pulling out of your pockets yeah. investing into your own studio equipment yeah. all of these things whereas if you are signed to a label but what else i love about being independent for and this is coming from me as a creator or as an influencer is that you have full range and full creative control over what you want your look which goes back to jazz's mm -hmm. um question that he asked which is about identity and style whereas you get to develop and formulate your look and mm -hmm. not go by the machine of what they mm -hmm. want you to go for and look. And that's for every album. And I bought some of the albums out that 
inspired me that were like the soundtrack to my life and two of them were the mary j blige my life album and the miseducation of lauren hill and those are two of the number most popular albums in in history hands down mm-hmm. especially the miseducation of lauren hill she has a song mm-hmm. on there about um zion and it, it, it is beautiful and she did one with mary j blige too so mm-hmm. they later worked on each other on, on, on one of her albums song, like, every day. <laughs> yes and um Working on these masterpieces, they have a team behind them, but I'm pretty sure they were just like, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. I'm not, especially Mary. Mary wasn't the type to let anybody water her down. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. when she sings, it's real. You feel everything, every Mm -hmm. lyric that she sings, blood, sweat, tears, with every emotion that Mary is feeling, you're going to feel that too. So that in itself but they were up on the record labels rough rough house records mm-hmm. and then she was up on the mca records so every mm-hmm. artist has their label behind them but how do you feel about being an independent artist versus being signed to a label man so when i was younger and i wanted to get into music I, all i wanted was a record label, a record deal. Let me get a record deal. Let me get a record deal. Right? Let me get a record deal. As I get older, or as I've gotten older, and actually started like diving into it head first, I realized mm-hmm. that it's not all it's cracked up to be in these record deals. To where you have that machine behind you and you got the finances behind you, it's great. But notes when you're behind, when somebody's behind you pushing their money or investing their money into you, you have to do. You're pu- you're their puppet at that point um independent nobody told me how hard it was going to be independent or i didn't know and i don't think a lot of people talk about it they everybody want to look all glitz and glam online or you know we have this this microwave age where everything on instagram we look like we just we got it like that, 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 that but nobody actually talks about how hard it is like as a upcoming artist independent artists, you have to go out and get it. Like a lot of the stuff that I'm putting out now, I'm literally doing all of that myself because everything adds up like really fast. Um, my cover art, I have to do my cover art because it's hard to find people. And then not only the pricing, it's hard to find somebody that kind of understands where your vision is and they might see something that may want to do it that way and you have it envisioned another way or whatever so you got that clashing factor going into so whereas me being independent i kind of can make my moves and do what i need to do what needs to get done and how i need to get done um but it is it has its ups and downs being independent um now when the big bros and that bank i start coming in as an independent artist come circle the block <laughs> we gotta have this conversation but right now um I'm in my ups and down phase. Um, there's a little struggles, but I guess it's character building, and it, it's gonna make me into that Grammy Platinum Diamond nominated artist that I'm destined to be. So, yeah. Yeah, and I love, love it. And you know who else um, is up under a label, but she's independently doing her thing, Meg The Stallion, and she's on my girl, the Amazing. Warner Brothers. I, I'm a hottie. I love Meg, but what I love is that they let her have creative control. She's mm-hmm. under the machine. She's in. She's under Warner Brother Records, which is a big record label. I mean, everybody from Madonna, mm-hmm. Maverick, Warner Brother, yeah, Lenny Kravitz, all of them. It's amazing that they let her have her own independent freedom and control over what she wanted mm-hmm. her album to look like. And that's what a lot of artists want. Whereas if you're signed mm-hmm. to a label, and I was watching an interview with T. Boz from TLC mm-hmm. and Cam Newton, mm-hmm. and T. Boz said for their world. third. Yeah, we're going to get to that. I'm going to talk, talk about that, too, because I touched <laughs> oh, on it last week with Michael. Uh, <laughs> I remember her saying when Left Eye passed away for their third, was it their third album after Fan Mail, 3D, mm-hmm. the album cover, if you guys go Google the album cover, if you have not seen it, the album cover was very dark. It was like a space, mm-hmm. it was more so like a space age album mm-hmm. cover. Not like fan mail, but it was just like they were all dressed oh, in black. And it was just like, like yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, not un- mm-hmm. unlike the first albums, Crazy Sexy Cool and an Ooh on the TLC tip and fan mail. It was, mm-hmm. Fan mail was more cyber intergalactic because we were mm-hmm. in the age of Y2K or shall I say AOL and Look email and back. technology. Did you see how, yeah. you see how it's coming back? <laughs> that we, whole aesthetic of yeah. futurism. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and... For this 
album, T um T Boss was saying that if they didn't put out an album or anything, the record label would have the album coming out all willy nilly. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. like, okay, if you don't do it, then okay, the record companies got it. They can say how they want your album to come out and how they want your aesthetic to look. Whereas if you are doing it on your own creative terms and division, it's a big big difference mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. shout outs to all of these artists out here who are being vocal about what they want their album or their style to look like because whenever a new art whenever an artist drops a project you want your sophomore project to be different than the first and mm -hmm. for again i referenced mary j blige the first album that came out was 411 the second one mm -hmm. was my life that's the sophomore album so you see how she changed, how the style started to change. I mean, she still had her tomboy aesthetic. But then mm -hmm. after the My Life album, it was Share My World. And we mm -hmm. see a transition. She's more dressed so more so. Still like a girl from New York, you know, like one of the street models from the New York area. She still had that street flair. But then after the My Life album, it became more, no, not My Life, Share My World. It was mm -hmm. when she did Mary. It was more so, okay, now we're just going full out gowns, <laughs> slits, <laughs> boots, all of these different, <laughs> yes. The the bang, I mean, she had the whole thing. <laughs> so <laughs> every artist. They're giving it some thigh highs. Yes. And she wore the cowboy hats too during that <laughs> era, during the Mary, Mary era. So see what I'm saying? Every artist, whenever they drop out a new project, they change with the album. The times. Another reference would be Rihanna. Rihanna when she first came out. Here. It was bubblegum. Bubblegum. Yeah. yeah. She, she, Rihanna is, and she is like the queen of switching it up. Evolution. Like, she keeps you on your toes. Yes. She's always giving you a look. Every album that she dropped has always been a different aesthetic, a different era, and it went with the album. And I think that was so genius. Like, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. The first one was Kiss of the Sun, and then the next mm -hmm. one was Good Girl Gone Bad, and then mm -hmm. after that, I think it was Rated R. Rated, Rated R. R was a little okay. bit more avant-garde. Her style was very mm -hmm. avant-garde, and she took it back to the 80s mm -hmm. as far as style mm -hmm. and aesthetics. Um, and the hair. She, she has so many hair changes. But mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? For every album, artists are not supposed to say the same and then my thing is with the audience the audience is just like when they're listening to it they're like okay we are expecting this specific sound um it's not going to be what you always see you never know mm -hmm. unless you try it so exactly. we're seeing artists now pick infusions of rock you mentioned lenny kravitz we're taking them infusions of r b we're taking infusions of jazz and gospel and we're seeing them all blend together and it's just like okay we see what you're doing now when Beyonce gave us the the country album. Or shall I say, she I said it's it. not a country album. It's not a country it's album. It's a Beyonce album. <laughs> but a country influence. <laughs> and she still, and it, still had her hip-hop, R&B flair mm -hmm. to it. And I was like, okay. I listened to, to track by track by track. Zero skips off of Cowboy Carter. Mm -hmm. And I was like, like, okay, we see what you're doing. It definitely drew us in because it was what mm -hmm. we were going to be expecting. With country music, it's somber, it's mm -hmm. sad, it's depressing, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's all of these things. But she added hip-hop and R&B to it. Mm -hmm. And I love And that's how you I cross over. It. You want to be able to touch mm -hmm. all audiences. Exactly. That's the place. <laughs> And yes, she that is. is she point. is a Pisces. And from, from Barbados. My fraternal is from Barbados. <laughs> so... Now, the question I wanted to ask you, because you asked me, can we curse? And we know that I am an open book here. What are what is one of your favorite swear words? If you can't say it, it, it it's got to roll off the tip of your tongue just in any moment when you're feeling happy. Bitch. OK. Bitch is a term. Bitch is a noun. Person, place, the thing. It's a term of endearment. You know when somebody is saying it to be nasty. You know when somebody is using it as like a ha ha moment. Um, I think yeah, between bitch and shit, shit was actually the first word I've ever said in life. My mom said that because my got it from my grandma. But shit, that's my other one. And then forgive me because we were talking about the civil rights. But nigga kind of just rolls off my tongue 
it was one song that I did, and I think I said it about 78 times in the song, but didn't realize it because that was the first song I recorded when I moved to Atlanta. Um, and yeah, it was like, I was getting ready to perform. I think it was like in June or May or something like this. And they were like, well, can you edit the song out? And I'm like, edit the song out? And then I felt like you taking away from my artists, you know, my creativity. So I go back to try to edit it out. And I count how many times I said, nigga, like, it's like almost 80 times. And I said, oh my gosh, I got to figure something out. Oh, oh. So I'm switching that up. But my favorite, I think, cuss words would be bitch and shit. Yeah. And speaking of song, because your, um, your mom says, or and as a song, um, we've uh -huh. got another question. Let me go to the question box. Um, my Island Yankee wants to know, what is one song that you recorded that you would want to re-record with a different beat down the line? Mm. Um, that's a good question. I have a bunch of songs that I haven't even recorded, I mean, released yet, so that's funny. Um, but um, out of the songs that I released that I want to do over, um, it's the song called, I actually have two. So it's a song called No Timing. Um, that was with me and my brother. A whole situation happened with that, so it ended up getting pulled off. But that was one of the first songs where it started getting a lot of traction and a ton of hits. And the producer did some shady stuff. But um, so I will re record that song um, just for that purpose that, to shit on that producer. Um, and then in this bitch, but in this bitch, um, only because I kind of want to remix it. I need to slow it down a little bit. Um, so where people say I'm rapping fast, I don't think I'm rapping fast. I think people are having just a hard time listening to it because it's at a faster pace than what you're used to hearing on the radio. Because every word is very clear. You understand what I'm saying if you actually take the time out to listen to what I'm saying. Um, and that's kind of what I want to do with my music. Because a lot of people get caught up with just the beat and everything. I want you to hear me, what oh, yeah. I'm saying and listen, hey, this is what I'm going through, or this is what I've dealt with, or this is what my homegirls is going through, or this is what my people going through, you know? Because uh, all the time when I've heard music, it's not always just about me. Yeah, I have it's some about input on it. Listen to the right. Mm -hmm. So I'll be like, my best friends, I call them my sisters, um, will be on a group chat. They'll be telling me all their little girl problems and everything like that, and I have find a way to make it into a story or kind of it's not necessarily make it my story but kind of formulate it to where you think i'm telling a story of maybe i was heartbroken or maybe yeah. baby daddy cheating or something like that you know what i'm saying so there's different stuff, stuff like that so i take different elements um stories that i hear sometimes i'll just randomly be talking with people and they'll tell me what they're going through and they'll be like well dang this is life and you're not by yourself i didn't hear some stuff like that too let me put it in the song. Or I didn't have moments where I'd have been laid up and I said, damn, I might need to go write this in a song. So, yeah, just stuff like that. Um, so it would be in this bitch. I would do that over or I would remix it a little bit. And then No Timing. That would be the song. Okay. We record. Oh, Fraterno, you said that in church. It, I, I wonder what the pastor said. <laughs> uh, but listen, um, <laughs> What is he about to say? Nigga is preaching. <laughs> and, and that was going to also be another, you you said management, behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Now, you we, we talked about TLC. What is mm -hmm. some advice that you've learned, because you and your brother both are artists, and Nina Simone said this, the artist, I'm going to go back to one of your statements before I go into the, the record label side and how to deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, Nina Simone said that an artist's job is to reflect the times so you said one thing that stood out right there that was critical and that is this song is not just about me but this there could be someone who could also go through this similar situation mm -hmm. as well too so it's not just about me because the listeners also take this in like I said the soundtrack to my life is the Mary J Blige my life album and whenever I'm feeling down I put on I'm going down that mm -hmm. that one and then it's another another song on the album on the my life album she has i think it's number eight you gotta believe so she talks about falling in love and and believing in love that's what it's about so right braids 
great music is always relatable. We put on that one song and it makes us think about something like, wow, a memory or nostalgia in some sort. And we're now in 2024 and nostalgia is a thing for everybody. Everything, so when we put yes. on that one song or I don't even know if people really listen to the radio like that, but we now do streaming. So mm -hmm. we've come a long way from uh, cassettes and CDs. I know people still listen to their albums and CDs and things. But back in the day, you had a tracks, you had the cassettes and people have now collected vinyls. So we've come a long way from that era to now in 2024, where it's about streams mm -hmm. and making sure that you have a certain amount of streams. But it is important that as artists, we continue to reflect what people are thinking, what they are saying. So I'm glad you touched on that. Now, my next question for you is. Um, we, we mentioned TLC and you said they were done so wrong. And I absolutely agree because for Crazy Sexy Cool, they generated $75 million for that album. I mean, the album was to that worldwide. <laughs> and um, that album, that, that was the sophomore album after their very first debut album, mm -hmm. which was all on a TLC tale. Mm -hmm. So they should have been paid fairly and accurately for that. And I mean, when you are an artist that is signed under a label, you tour, you got to do press, you got to do promotion, you got to do album signing, you got to do all of these things. And then if you get a sponsor, like back in the day, they would have the Sprite tours. Mm -hmm. And I think it was what it was. I, I want to say SWV and another group were together during the Sprite tour. 7022. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're seeing a lot of artists back in the day, they would sign up with these brands like uh, Budweiser or maybe Sprite and they would endorse. So all of these things, these artists should be getting paid for. Mm -hmm. And that is one thing. I remember the girls TLC and I think Chili, they were sharing the story where they literally had to go and hold Arista up. Arista is the mm -hmm. record company. Because and we know. all know who is the head. Y'all know where I'm going. <laughs> who is the head mm -hmm. of that company, right? Clive Davis. Mm -hmm. So who does Clive That's Davis good. work with? And she's one of my favorite singers. You guys know I'm obsessed with her. And I love this woman to pieces. I wish she was still here. She just celebrated a birthday. That's Whitney Houston. Mm -hmm. And she's worked alongside Clive Davis. So LaFace, L.A. Reid, Pebbles had Pebbletone. So that's her label. Outside of that, at the time she was married to L.A. Reid. So where why the girls literally had to go and hold up Arista Records, close out the meeting that Puffy had and show up in their guns mm -hmm. the whole shebang because they were just like, where's the money? We're working, torn across the country. Where <laughs> is the money? Where's so Left Eye, <laughs> Left Eye got the girls from the Diversion Center and we know she got in trouble for burning down the house. But she got those <laughs> girls and those girls stood outside on guard of those doors and make sure nobody got in that room because the girls wanted to talk business. I'm so, we had to do it. Yeah. They said everything, they took everything off the walls that had TLC on it. It, it. Anything that had TLC, they told the girls to take it off the walls. A pen, it can be anything. Mm -hmm. I, I don't blame mm -hmm. them for doing that. You pay artists their money mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. artists tour across the country. You're away from your family, away from long, for long hours and mm -hmm. a day. You only get to phone call. Back in the day, you couldn't vid FaceTime with your family. Mm -hmm. But now we have it so you can FaceTime with your family or you can actually bring your family on the road with you. And even that's mm -hmm. difficult because the key, if you have children, the children got to go to school, all of these things. If you're in the limelight and you're performing in tour, it's a lot that goes into it. And you're mm -hmm. having to hire a babysitter or send the kids with your parents. So it is a lot. So I don't blame the girls for doing that, that at all. So it is definitely a lot that goes on behind the scenes in the record label and in the music industry. As Roddy, Roddy just mentioned, with artists not being paid fairly or equally. Hmm. So what are your thoughts on that? We, we see it now come these, to the light. Uh, we still got a bunch of these with no talent, zero talent, being overpaid for mediocre work. Um, I don't even want to drop no names because I don't try to get blackballed early on. <laughs> but it's a lot of mediocre talent being uh, paid more than the actual artist with the talent that actually is putting in the work and putting in the time and, uh, you know, really bearing all in their music. 
um, compared to just being fair skinned. But um, it's, yeah, I think artists should be paid with their words. Um, and I think there's different platforms. Now that we're in the streaming age, it kind of makes yeah. it more um, direct to you guys from artists directly to consumer rather than it going through X, Y, and Z or different distribution. But even some of the distribution places are robbing folks. Um, hell, I've been with my music on Spotify and I just realized that I'm only getting paid like three cents a stream. And that's a re yeah. real life thing. Three cents per stream on Spotify. It's crazy. And it's, <laughs> it's even more difficult it, for black artists. Mm-hmm. 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 100%. So hopefully we're in this age where we're going to change the dynamic of that and the sound and all of that um, with this, I don't know. I'm just saying patient. It's something that I really want to do. So it's kind of like, all right, this is what I signed up for. So let's get it. I'm not in it for like the 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 fame and the the, the money and all that. Yeah, I know that comes with it, but I'm yeah. in it because this is what I want to do. It's what I've been called to do. I believe this is my calling. So it ain't gonna keep me up at night for nothing. <laughs> and an artist that I just recently interviewed by the name of Vante said the same exact thing that. He says, as I'm building my name, I don't want to, all of that other stuff that comes along with it. And he referenced Michael Jackson and everything Michael had to go through with being an artist that big on that caliber to the point where you're going out and paparazzi is following you. And it takes mm -hmm. a toll on your mental health as well. Too. So that's why it is critical and important that we continue to surround ourselves with like-minded people who are, mm -hmm. are by us. And you mentioned your mom and then your brother also being in the industry. And that's what it takes is family being there, supporting you and your vision as well mm -hmm. throughout the entire process. So that's important. My mind's my biggest thing, even if my music, if I think the song is trash. She's like, I love it, I love it. Like, girl, <laughs> that doesn't even sound good, but okay, my <laughs> <sighs> Yes. So let's switch gears here. We covered music mm -hmm. and the music industry. I'm going to go back because my fraternal asked the question. I, a, I got him fraternal. Um, skincare and self-care regime. What okay. is your skincare regime? Because we are looking at you and your skin looks amazing. You are you. absolutely gorgeous. So we want to know what are some of your skincare secrets? And when you are not working or in the studio recording, what do mm -hmm. you do for self-care and your downtime? Um, so first things first with skincare, and I say this all the time, is a moisturizer. This is for my black males in America. <laughs> Get some say moisturizer. Say one more time for me. Stop using the you no know, dove lotion. Stop you. Get your actual moisturizer for your skin. Um, I actually use a lot of the butters and not the store-bought butters, but I mean the cocoa butters, mango butter, shea butter. Um, I use the raw African black soap. Um, I use that actually daily. Um, I wash my face with it, body with it. Um, hydrate, drink a lot of water. Um, I typically only drink water, Sprite, maybe in Sprite is random, ginger ale if I want something different than water, and then alcohol in the weekend. <laughs> But uh, most of the hydration comes in from the water, so that's a big thing. Um, I would say I rest, but my sleeping pattern has been crazy these past few weeks. So When you're on the go, I, I totally mm -hmm. understand. Um, but I am all about the serums, so I'll use my, what is that? I'm going to say this all wrong, but the hydro, hydroclonic, hydrolonic. Hyaluronic uh, acid, acid serum. Is that it? That one. Yeah. Uh-huh. I use that. Um, the snail mucin. Um, and I, Korean skincare, I actually just started getting into Korean skincare with the, uh, not my cousin with this very Demore girl, we very dead ass over here, <laughs> but, um, uh, I've gotten into this Korean skincare and they have this 24 karat gold, uh, serum. It's almost it's probably like a hyaluronic acid as well. Um, but I just use it and I... Tap it. I have a little exfoliator brush thingy, and I do that every week, well, every day, um, daily, not as hard and gentle, and just kind of, like, pamper myself. I mean, when you look good, you feel good, and that's, like, skincare. That's when you dress well, like, all of that. So usually people would be like, well, why are you getting dressed up to go to Walmart? 
Why not? <laughs> you exactly. never know who you're running, especially since I moved to Atlanta. I'm run, I'm running into so many different people in random places. I went to Walk Stone Mountain and ran into David Barron out of nowhere, and he came up to me and hit me with the one two, and we walked the whole mountain together, had a full fledged conversation. What unexpected, like not happening, but I just I'm not one of them people. My not my biological grand grandfather, but he's like a grandfather figure. Um, I think I might maybe be only seen this man in sweatpants one time before he passed out of the years that I was J high yeah. on up. So he was like, even on Sundays, he'll have on khakis and a polo. Monday morning, full suit. Well, Monday through Friday, he's typically suited and booted. The weekend, Saturday, come home. Looks like he might be going to play golf or nothing, but you'll never see him in sweatpants. I probably literally only seen him like one time. And it was one of those, like, people see you first before they actually get to know you. Present yourself well. My mind was very big on um, presenting yourself well, being presentable. Yes. Um, and not only being presentable, but being knowledgeable and being a good person. Um, and yeah, so that's where I am with that. And I agree 100%. Self-care. Eminence is everything. Yes, self care. Okay, um, you know, my manicures, pedicures. I like when my feet get a little rubbed on because it be needing them sometimes. Um, I do my little facials. I have my own hookah. So I, sometimes I'll have like a little self-care day and I'll put on my little Moroccan clay mask, get my hookah lit up, um, pour me a glass of wine and just pamper myself. Um, sometimes I don't even want to go out to do the pampering. I'll just stay home pampering myself. Oh, Cook yeah. all the favorite foods. I might go get my little chocolate strawberries and, and all of that good stuff and literally just have a spa day at home. And I'm a homebody for the most part. So <laughs> that's usually the thing. And that is important that we take time as people because as entertainers as you know creatives it's important that we take time for ourselves because we give so much of ourselves to the world that it's important mm-hmm. that we take time for ourselves and just sort of just sit back and relax throughout the day because that's why i said we both you said your sleeping pattern was scared was crazy and i was like i totally understand that and we're always helping out with family, always doing our thing, creating. It's a lot. It takes mm-hmm. a lot out of you. So it's important that we refuel and self-care is definitely a must. Mm-hmm. So I had to ask. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Let me get Island Yankees comment. It's a lot of mediocrity in artists, but their mediocrity caters to their audience and it gives them a whisper, not a voice. Mm-hmm. Though. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And my thing is this to touch on that point. <laughs> I ain't no names, but I feel like I know who you were talking about. <laughs> Sorry. Originality is key. Be the best mm-hmm. version of yourself. There's so many amazing singers and artists out here. Mariah's not trying to be like Janet. Janet is not trying to be like Selena. Mm-hmm. Selena is not trying to be like a Whitney. And mm-hmm. Whitney is not trying to be like Tina Turner, let's mm-hmm. say. I-, I love Tina Turner. I, I can't. I remember the day. I found out the news that she passed out. It was on a Saturday and I was scrolling down IG and I seen her picture and I I just couldn't believe it because I'm just like, this woman was electrifying. One Mm -hmm. thing she was known for was giving you a performance. She was going to give you a show and her legs always stole the show. Mm -hmm. So when I seen it, I was just like in disbelief because I'm like, this this is the queen of rock and roll for black women. It was random too. Yeah. I I, feel like it was so random because that's I think we just saw her out, like moving out and about. And yes. then it was like random Tina Turner dad. I think I feel like that was one of the random deaths. Almost like Prince too. Yes. Prince was a random what, what Prince and Michael. The, and the Michael. one that really hit me hard the most was Whitney and, and Michael. Those were the two that really hit me the most right there. Because Mike hit me hard. I remember the day I remember everything that I was doing. My mom texted me for the first time. I was at track practice in high school. This was right around the text message errors came and everything. Texting became a big thing. My mom did not like text messages, but she texted me talking about some Michael Jackson. Walked around that track yelling out, they killed Michael. They killed Michael, y'all. They killed Michael. <laughs> and now they fast forward years later. Now they say it was a homicide. Mm-mm. I, I believe it's other things in mm-hmm. that as well, too. Mm-hmm. And I remember watching the news. Mm-hmm. They were, you know, the helicopter camera or whatever was over the hospital room. 
I remember watching that, and it just gave us coverage, and then it just broke. Mm -hmm. the, the red thing flashed across the screen and said, King of Pop, legendary singer Michael Jackson passed. And mm -hmm. he was so young. Like, they, they all pass away so, so, so young. Mm -hmm. And today mm -hmm. we just lost a talk show icon, Phil Donahue. And Phil mm -hmm. was pivotal along when you had Oprah, when you had Sally, when you had all of these amazing talk show hosts out. So my condolences goes to Milo Thomas, his uh, wife, and his family as well, too. So we lo we've lost so many icons and giants. So it's important that we give people their flowers important to them. And that's also self-care, too. When you pour into people, it goes back to what Roddy just said, which is when you pour into people or when you do something, you feel good on the inside. It does something for you. So Especially when you're doing it from thing. a genuine place and not with, with the expectations of what I'm going to receive if I do this for you. And unfortunately, right. a lot of people in the world nowadays is what can I get out of this? Or even with friendships and stuff like that, um, I had to kind of use my discernment on friend groups and everything because it was like, people are so unauthentic nowadays that it's crazy. You can't, um, you don't really know who's there for you unless you're like really understanding and you're in tune with yourself and that voice of that spirit of discernment really kicks in and it saved me from so much chaos and BS. So, like, I just try to move and operate from a genuine place all the time. Um, oh. I, I'm not, yeah, it might be a slow rise, but I'm not selling my soul to get where I want to be either. The real ones know what's up. <laughs> and that is the thing. A lot of artists get in this industry, and mm -hmm. they li it's like you literally have to sell your soul. But the thing is, no. Remain your true self. Remain your mm -hmm. own individual self from the beginning when you get in those doors to the end. Remain your true self. The only thing about us that will change is our looks as artists. Mm -hmm. But we will always have the same heart, same mindset. We will always care. We will always be gentle. We will always have compassion. We will always have all of these emotions. And that goes into your artistry as well, too, because people, the listeners, the viewers, the watchers, take along to what we're saying as well, mm -hmm. too. So again, it is the job of the artist to reflect the times. And that comes from Nina Simone. So mm -hmm. I always quote that. So we have to remember that. I'm so glad I'm a loner. And that's the thing as well, too. There's nothing wrong if you're in the industry. You, you like a small circle. I know my circle is very small. It's important that you surround yourself with people who keep you uplifted, who mm -hmm. call you in and be like, OK, let's talk. We see something mm -hmm. is wrong. Let's talk you about it. You don't see much or and, you need to reel it in. Like, hold on. You're going down the spiral. Wrap it up. Like, what's going on? <laughs> and that that goes into that humbleness, that mm -hmm. being humble mm -hmm. and knowing where you come from. Never forget where you come from and stand tr true to who you are. Mm -hmm. And my mom told me that. She, she said, don't you get too big that you forget to put God because she's a faith based woman. And she said, don't you get too big that you forget where you came from? Because just as fast as God put you in that position, he can take you, you out of that position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what she this told me. Grandma, and my just had a similar conversation yesterday. Because I thought the interview was yesterday, so I got all excited. I'm set up uh -oh. at home, and I was like, uh, and I look at the flyer, and I said, I call my mom, I said, mom, this thing is tomorrow, not today. <laughs> she was like, why do you look good, man? So, <laughs> I think that's where, yeah, I think we talked about that a little bit yesterday, too. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So before we close out this interview, Fashion Dolls, and I'm going to take some more of you of the audience's questions before we wrap mm -hmm. up. But we're going to have some fun here with Roddy. All right. So you guys know that I love luxury. I love fashion. I love home decor. I love all of the nice things of the world. But we're going to do something called the Fab Five here. Okay. And Roddy has to tell me five things that are fabulous in his life that he can't live without. And then the next one we're going to do is called Turn the Tables. So I get put in the hot seat. This is where my guests get to take over the show and ask me questions. As many okay. as they want to. It can be on life, love, fashion, beauty, relationships, experience, whatever they want to know. Motivation, what keeps me going, whatever they want to know. Okay. For the new viewers, you get to know about me through Roddy's questioning. All right. All right. So we're going to start off with the Fab Five. What are five things that Roddy can't live without? <laughs> Wings. OK. <laughs> I love me a wing. And later turn me into a lemon pepper stuffer. Um, let's see. 
I can't live without music. Um, I literally, I'm, I'm good off of TV. I don't even have to watch TV, but if I don't have my music, I probably go start crazy. Um, and that's not even like my own music. That's just music in general. Oh, yeah. Um, what I can't live without. Um, can't live without. My friends I can't live without. Oh, that's not, I've never thought about that. I don't want to say my phone because it's so of the time and unfortunately everybody's glued to their devices 24 yeah. 7 so i feel like that shouldn't even be in that category of things because if we can separate from the phones i think the world would be a better place for a little bit um can't live without this is gonna sound uh, I, this really says sewing machine that is yeah my sewing machine, actually. <laughs> so he's uh one of the he's actually the one of the stage managers for the love of Mary Jackson, and he's a photographer as well. Um, uh, so yes, so my sewing machine is right because I'm usually there. Um, fourth, positive, good vibes, and I know that sounds yes. really cliche or really lackluster in response. But oh, it really makes a difference um, in everything that you're doing. If the vibe is right and the positivity is there and everybody is cohesive, it's usually a good time. And that's what I'm about. I always want to have a good time. Let's just have fun. <laughs> do what we got to do. Let's make it fun. Even at work. Do what we got to do. Let's make it work. Um, and I was going to say my family, my close and my the family that I was born into and then the family that I've grown as I've uh, gotten to my adult years because I don't think I'd be, I'd probably be a little batshit crazy without them. Probably still a little batshit crazy now, but <laughs> without them, I think they helped me stay a little level-headed and grounded. So, yeah. And the big G.O.D. happened to that family because, yeah. Oh, yeah. All the time, mm -hmm. all the time. Family is key and crucial and important through anything, and mm -hmm. we need them throughout this business. So, all right, fashion mm -hmm. dolls. My heart is beating fast. I have no idea what Roddy is going to ask me, what he's going to ask know. me in this next segment. Oh. So, I'm going to pass the microphone on down to Roddy, <laughs> and he's going to ask me some questions that he's burning to ask. All right, here we go. Um, what are is your angle, I guess, as far as like with the podcast and the interviews and everything? Because you, like somebody said, you have done a really good job interviewing. You made this so comfortable, and oh, it just thank like, you. kind of like bounced back and forth. Um, what's your angle with your uh, career and entertainment? I would love to. I would love to have my own network mm -hmm. where black artists can come and perform, have their own shows where they can have other black filmmakers, directors, producers, sort of like what Issa Rae did, you know, mm. after they closed okay. her show down on Showtime or one of the networks, she went and she started her own production company. Mm -hmm. So it would be like that. And I would have my show on the network as well, too. So I would push it and I would do it on my own terms. I wouldn't be under a CBS or NBC, mm. but I would want to give a home to black artists, black artistry, black filmmakers, because we are underrated and we don't get enough credit. And the quote of Reese Ray, I love vote for everybody black. <laughs> everybody and everything black. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um let's see. What were some of the greatest challenges um breaking into uh what you're doing now? What were some of the things that you faced that were like, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this or you just wanted to give up and then what gave you the motivation or that spark to be like, Oh no, this is not the end yet, we just getting started. You said the spark. Well, my island Yankee mm -hmm. down there in the comments is, is the spark. Um, I would be going off or I would be mad about something negative or a negative comment. He just like, no, 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 you don't do this. I got you, sis. And and he will go after that person or it, the fashion dolls. They know they're very protective of me. So <laughs> um, I would say colorism. Colorism okay. is one because as you guys can see, I'm not the brightest chick in the room. I'm a chocolate sister. So that's one thing. Um, trans misogynoir as a black trans woman, the being told you're not feminine looking enough, all of these things, or quote unquote what we say, getting clocked, all of these things take a play 
that I've experienced as well, too. So I said, you know what? Let me go ahead and create my own seat at the table. And that's what the first black woman who ever ran for president. Now we got a black woman that is going running for president and that is going to be here and make it happen. Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. Shirley Chisholm says this. When they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. And that's what oh, I did. Well. I brought and my folding might, chair. I got to smack somebody with it. We <laughs> At, what's so crazy is, and I touched on this with um, Tika G. We we touched on the anniversary of what happened on the Alabama. Uh-huh. So that was funny. It's it's crazy. It ties into it because a black man invented the folding chair. So, mm-hmm. but yes, uh, I I create my own opportunities. But those are some of the obstacles that I've had to overcome: colorism, massage noir, uh, transphobia, all of these things. Yeah. All right. Um. Where do you project? Well, no, I think that's kind of tying into the first question I asked. Um, who would be your ideal uh, guest on your show? I think that's a good question. Like your top, top five. Oh, okay. I would say for the first one, Laverne Cox. Love her. Okay. The second one would be Taraji P. Henson. Okay. The third one would be Marlon Wayans. And I have a Marlon mm-hmm. Wayans story. I met him at the hair show in Atlanta. You're in Atlanta. So I met him at the hair show in Atlanta and we took a picture together. And he is so down to earth, so laid back. The same thing that you see with, his, with how he handles his kids out there in the mm-hmm. real world. Very cool, laid back, down to earth dude. Like, I have that photo to this day. Um, okay. Number four, I would have to say T.S. Madison. I, I love how bold and unapologetic she is mm-hmm. and what mm-hmm. she stands for. She doesn't take any prisoners. She doesn't want, she's not about to water herself down for nobody. So mm-hmm. I would have to say Maddie. And I've been trying to get her on the show for a very, very long time. I've already interviewed Craig and we had a good time and Chi Chi. But Maddie is one that I've been trying mm-hmm. to get on the show. So I would have to say T.S. Madison. Number five. I would have to say Viola Davis. Oh. But I've seen what <laughs> she's been through in this business mm-hmm. as, mm-hmm. A, as a black woman, you know, as fighting, dark, being told, and I, woman, yeah, yeah, darker skinned black woman. So those, those would be my top five. Because the guess the light skinned girls, the light skinned girls go make it. And I, 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 I'm a, what is it? Um, I am part of the dark skin coalition. For the longest, I've been fighting the fact that I've white skin. I think I'm dirty beige. That's how I classify. That's how I identify as. I try to hold on to as much melanin as possible. I'm just a little yellow, okay? <laughs> I support all my brown skin baddies. Um, but, okay. Um, those top five. Actually, that sounds like a good little podcast. All five of them together sounds like a good time. <laughs> <laughs> like, need some cocktails or that. <laughs> um, and I guess for my last question, I don't know. I wasn't expecting that question. Um, let's, let's see. What would, I want to, I'm trying to get Jersey. What would you classify yourself as if you had to identify as a drink? What would be the drink that says, okay, this is Stevie? The feisty so, fiesta. The feisty that? that's fiesta. <laughs> yes, that's, if I were a drink, that would be the name of it. The feisty the fiesta, feisty because fiesta. I love <laughs> Because I am a little feisty. I'm a Scorpio, October Mm -hmm. 31st, and we're known for being wild and adventurous. So I I get it from my mom. My mom's a Libra. Yeah, my mom's is October 7th. Mine's Mm. is the 31st. And what's so crazy is my brother's is their Valentine's Day, February 28th. So it's like Mm. everybody has their own holiday. But Mm -hmm. the feisty fiesta, because I am fiery a little bit, I stand true to what I believe in. I don't back down or water myself down. Um, I make sure that the spaces that I'm in, I also try to include everybody. I'm inclusive and mm-hmm. I want equality for all. So when I'm fighting, I'm not just fighting for me. I can't be selfish. I'm fighting for other people too because mm-hmm. if I had to choose, mm-hmm. I choose black first. I'm black first, trans second, and then woman third. 
So I occupy all of those spaces. It's called intersectionality. So if I had to classify myself as a drink or choose a name for myself, it would be the feisty fiesta because I'm feisty and I love to have a good time. Now, would that be tequila based or is it a cognac or whiskey or bourbon? Okay. A little, I feel like <laughs> bourbon is a little spicy, so I would have to say bourbon. <laughs> bourbon. Okay. Okay. That makes, okay. Okay. I don't know what my drink would be. I don't know. I'm going to call it the Mission Impossible. And mine is because you make them so long out. Exactly. Will Smith said, "I make the impossible look easy." <laughs> but the, no, one of the Will Smiths, right? Yeah, one of them. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so and I think that's it for me. Um, yeah, I don't really have any questions. It was, it was great questions. I never had a, someone ask what drink would I be because if I was to name a drink, <laughs> it, would, it would definitely be that because. Like I said, my personality, I'm a mix of everything. I'm feisty, sweet, kind, giving, gentle, nurturing. So, but mainly when it comes to something that I'm fighting for, it's going to be feisty all day. I'm going to give you what you want. My right. brother is the complete opposite. My um, siblings, and I think I inherit that from my mom because my mom's a Libra. And I don't think, mm -hmm. I, I hate bringing zodiac signs into it, but I see her fire and her passion when she's fighting for something or telling somebody off or standing up for herself. So I mm -hmm. think I get that from her. We are our parents' children, and it's just like you sound just like your mom mm -hmm. or you look just mm -hmm. like your mom, and we get it all the time. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think that's all I have for you. Um, and, yeah. And we, I don't think this is fine. We got a, we got a question for for you from the question box. My Alan okay. Yankee wants to know, how do you feel about artists who are scared of evolving because they are scared of losing their audience? That has happened. Um, I think so, not just artists, people in general, I think they're scared of change. Um, and you also have to be open to change. I always like to question my classify myself as a forever student. So I'm constantly learning every day. I'm learning something new. Um, I can't think of who quoted this, but I heard it years ago when I was younger. If you learn three new things a day, then you've had a pretty good day, a pretty productive day. So I kind of always want to learn something, keep evolving and changing. Um, with change, there is a way of evolution and change as an artist and still staying true to who you are. Um, and I think a lot of people get stuck with, they want to be, oh, I'm from the hood. And they always think that they have to represent the hood 24 seven when the hood not even representing them for real. Um, especially when you get to a certain magnitude, you have to be able to walk into these rooms and have conversation and oh, articulate yeah. well yeah. and not be that typical person from the hood or what they categorize us to be or the, 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 the stereotypical thugs and everything. You have to be able to switch it up. As uh, my homegirl said on Hustle and Flow, you got to keep the tricks guessing. So you never know what you're going to get with me. Like, and that's one of my things. So I kind of, that's why I kind of call myself in the experimental phase because I can go hardcore rap. Right? I can give you a freestyle. I can do all of that, give you straight some hood stuff, turn around, oh, give yeah. you a pop song, then turn around. I might even take it to church, but I'm not really into gospel music. <laughs> I'm not you know, just to kind of get give you that versatility so there's no one trick pony like you got to be able to switch it up and keep them guessing right um so if you're scared of change and scared of adapting to change you're going to stay stuck and you end up stifling yourself and who knows that one minor change that you take could open up a gateway of doors all because they might have said oh maybe you should dye your hair black but i like my hair brown weird up okay it's just my hair it'll grow back i can dye it it's just that I can dye right. my hair black. I still have my hair. My hair still now is jet black. But now here I am doing, let's say, hair campaigns and extra, like, you know, locked stuff and all that stuff. But just like minor stuff. So I think you can't be scared of change. We have to accept it as it goes because every day, every day there's change taking place, whether we want to accept it or not. Um, and that's if we're getting older, we're changing. The days, if you're constantly doing the same thing 24 7, how are you evolving as a person? What are you doing without change so if you're scared of change where are you gonna go not with me because we gotta <laughs> level up every time 
Exactly. I'm not going to be stuck with you. <laughs> and, you know, there's a lot of people that's constantly, like, complaining, constantly stuck, constantly looking at the bad things or the situations that's going down, constantly complaining about all the negative stuff going wrong with their life and not necessarily being thankful or grateful for the positive things that are coming into that day or the things that they have going good for them or whatever. And when you sit there and take so much time to harbor on the bad things going on, that's all you're going to continue to see because you just let it manifest itself even bigger. So why focus on that bad bullshit when you can sit here and focus on all the good things that God's blessing you with? Like, come on, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Like, and granted, life gets stressful. We all human. But it's how you maneuver. Like, my mom always said, I ain't crying over no spilled milk. So it's spilled. Hello. <laughs> it, exactly. But I'm exactly. going to wipe and, it up and pour me a new cup. And every artist is not going to get it. And I told my guests this last week. You're not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Like I said when I referenced Beyonce when she dropped the, the Cowboy Carter album. Mm -hmm. Every artist has something that sets them aside differently. So we've known her mm -hmm. from her previous works from it was the Lemonade album or Dangerously in Love. The sound mm -hmm. is going to be different. You still will have some of the same elements, but at the same time, she's going to give you something worth listening mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. So you have to be ready for change. I, I love change. Mm -hmm. I think change is beautiful. Expect the unexpected. And every season mm -hmm. consecutively here that I've done every interview, I try to make sure that I have a different look. I try mm -hmm. to have range. And that's what it takes, even for actors. Actors get typecasted, and that is one thing. Mm -hmm. Actors get to play one specific role, and they stick with it. Mm -hmm. So now mm -hmm. we see actors stepping outside of their comfort zone and doing mm -hmm. things that they wouldn't normally do. And that's what it's about. I, I change for me, at first, I'm just like, I want to stay this way, I want to stay this way, mm -hmm. and I want to focus on this. But you have to be willing to change. because mm -hmm. And it gets scary. People guessing. scary. Right. It's not not to say that change all change is like gonna be oh okay it's good let's get on right. I'm gonna be nervous on certain things or whatever and I will move with caution but I'm open to change so it's like not only does it help you grow as a person but like I said it opens up so many different doors or different opportunities that may not have been offered to you if you were just so narrow minded or stuck in that one train of thought like so. I'm off for the change. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, fashion dolls. Any more questions before we conclude? I think we just about answered them all. This is such a great conversation, and I hope you all enjoyed this. I can't keep writing because I remember you saying you had rehearsals. Yeah. But before before we close out this interview, what are some words and gems that you would give to other? independent up and coming artists that are following in your footsteps because there's so many out here. We're seeing a lot of new artists emerge on the scene and they're doing different things in music. They could be doing jazz, hip hop, country, mm -hmm. gospel, independently, and they're doing this all on their own. What is some advice that you would give to them before we close? I out? actually uh, just had a similar question uh, asked that like a few weekends ago. Um, and my words to him was to stick with it, um, stay true to, as you mentioned, stay true to who you are and don't give up, especially if it's a gift from God. Um, I always feel like you're not born or blessed with all of these talents just to let it go, yeah. like to waste. It might not be your time. Solange said that timing is everything. That's my cancer twin. But um, Solange said timing is everything. And when I first jumped into like recording everything, I just knew I was on gun ho. Oh, I'm about to take off. I'm about to do this. That's fine, Z. No. <laughs> and I, I can't think of who said this, but it said if you want to, uh, you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. Hello. <laughs> And baby, when I tell you, I didn't understand that until I just moved to Atlanta, uh, and it was like, oh, okay, it's not going the way I planned. But I'm walking, I'm walking, going through the steps, I'm going through the processes. I'm watching me grow as an artist. Um, so it's more so you just it's how bad you want it. Stick with it. Stay hungry. Um, that one no is not going to be a no forever. Um, you're gonna. I, gotten told no so many times. I got Same told no by people that I here. felt like wasn't as talented as me, but that's not going to stop me from doing what needs to get done. Find your tribe. 
stay true to who's true to you and just don't have ask it if you're going to do it go hard or go home and that sounds so cliche but it, it's really like do it and Jones, <laughs> you got to do it when the odds is against you do it like when the people when you you have quote unquote people that you thought was going to support you aren't supporting like you thought they would do it because nothing's out of 10 when you start getting all this love from outside um and the followers they're going to jump on the bandwagon oh i know this person from x y and z back in the day that i keep that same energy as you was when i first started out because you're not you don't come around now because now you see everybody else is on the train like you missed that train <laughs> so just stay with it stay positive stay humble um and love on those that are loving you and i think that's what it's about um i don't think it's enough money for oh, I, I think it's enough money for everybody to win um it's a lot of crab and barrel a crab in the barrel mentality yes um and that's when i say find the tribe that is that's, that's rocking with you or whatever because that's what caused me to like learn how to engineer and record myself and everything because you've had people i've had people record me and they realize oh this nigga really got talent let me make his music sound trash and then i got to go back and find somebody else to remix it or i got to go re-record it because it didn't come out the way it was supposed to oh, secret jealousy envy nobody wants to see them doing better you see you doing better than them and that's the mindset that we need to get out as a culture um that crab in the barrel shit is something i think that was instilled from us back in the day um and we gotta let that shit go um i help i'm offer. i help everybody that i can if i can be of assistance i will um that don't mean work yourself thin it just means be there we human like that's what we said how we can't thrive if we don't help each other like, exactly <laughs> but so i just yeah stay true to you do what you got to do go hard go home and love on yourself and love on everybody that loves on you absolutely and to close out today's show, Fashion Dolls, today's final thought comes from Baynard Rustin, and he says, we need in every community a group of angelic troublemakers. And what he meant by that was, we're going to have to have people who are going to be outspoken on the issues and their creativity as far as their look. And as Roddy said, make That's sure you <laughs> sur <laughs> surround yourself. Damn, this sound like my kind of party. <laughs> yes, angelic troublemakers we, we got to continue <laughs> to be the voice for change the catalyst for change and continue to inspire the next generation that is coming after us fashion also mm -hmm. remember that now before we let you go let everyone know where they can follow you and the single is titled move out now on all platforms it dropped on the 16th make sure you guys please go and check it out and make sure yeah. you guys please go and get your tickets at the ancperformancecompany.com, www.ancperformancecompany.com. The play is titled For the Love of Mahalia, and it began September 20th up until October 6th. Mm -hmm. So where can everyone mm -hmm. follow you and check you out? Um, I'm Roddy Dundata on all platforms, Instagram, uh, Twitter, oh, excuse me, X, um, Facebook. Um, yeah, I'm on all streaming platforms, YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify, Pandora, Deezer, iHeartRadio, um, Roddy Dundada, that's R-O-D-D-Y-D-O-S-D-A-D-A. -A -D -A. <laughs> and yeah, I did, like Steve just said, I just dropped my new single, Move. It came out on the 16th. Um, check me out. I'm working on the visuals, so you guys are going to get some, some visuals coming. And yeah, that's about it. And this is the other artist. Before we go, this is the other artist that I was telling you about. This is Fonte. Hey, Fonte. Yes. <laughs> and he also has something coming out next month. So both of you have projects that are coming out next month. Definitely check him out. So. Yes, for sure. Sure. I love it. <laughs> but yeah, um, we got to do this again. Yes. Uh, pleasure. This is my, oh, I forgot to say this is my first time doing an interview as an artist. So thank you. For making it easy and, and fun. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. I don't know what to expect. I was so nervous. <laughs> it's nervous too, but we had a good time here. And mm -hmm. I hope you guys all did have a great time. And this show will be up on, he says, congrats, bro. And what's up, Roddy? Thank you. I'm follow you on Instagram. But I say, I'll follow you on Instagram. Follow me back. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes. Yes. Network. Network. Check him out. You check him out. Both amazing artists. And I've had the pleasure of speaking with both of y'all. So I can't wait to chat with y'all again. Yeah. All right, yeah. fashion dolls. So All right. make sure Thank you guys you. head on over and subscribe. <laughs> you too. Head on over and subscribe to Style by Stevie Daytime. Joining me tomorrow, we have Salvage in Bermuda. So make sure you guys tune in tomorrow for I love y'all and y'all be safe and take care. So you too. All right, bye. <laughs> you too.